Hello everyone, this is BA Factor. And Game Girl. Here to bring you another eight player free for all on the World Carnage. I know we've been playing this world a lot. I actually want to make a new system, but the system designer is not playing nice right now. Uh, whenever I try to make a system and I modify the CSG to do things like what you see on the screen right here, I like put a little hole here so you can put Hulkins in there, things like that. Uh, when I go back into the system after it's playing, this isn't here anymore in the design. So I've reported that bug and hopefully they'll get it fixed and then I can start producing uh, new systems. It's very frustrating when that happens. It is frustrating. Let's see who we got in here today. Let's see. We have the two of us, husband and wife, B8 Factor and Game Girl. Bob has returned. Chill Spine. Clip. Alpha has returned. And Class A IRB Ken and Keeper Keeper. Yes, we definitely have Bob and Alpha, two people we play with quite a bit. We keep an eye on them, and they are their appropriate colors for what we normally play. Bob's usually green, and Alpha's usually pink. That always helps when you're playing the same players over and over. It definitely does, and I am sort of incognito here. I am blue. I usually play red, so I went ahead and went blue, and that's kind of throws somebody for a little bit of a loop, maybe. It did. It seems like I remember Bob said... He saw some red, and it really scared him because he thought it was you. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. So let's go ahead and put the perspective on the two of us. I've got this fast forward on a little bit, a little bit quicker. <clears throat> now, I've got a couple things going on here that I want to point out. One, I just got off work when I'm playing this game, and I just decided to do some rare, different build. I know this location on the map pretty well, and I know that you know I want to, I want to balance this map a little bit more. I know that I don't have anybody... Uh, really close except for this one player. A lot of the other positions have multiple people close. So I decided I was going to tech first. And uh, you know what? Anytime you change your build, it can be devastating to your game. It can really throw you off. Yes. It looks like you've got your commander walking further than usual. Don't you usually do more of a tight start? I do. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm a different color. I went a different build. I built this metal storage first, which doesn't serve any purpose uh, to build the first structure, that's for sure. First game of the night. Yes, first game of the night. And I'm running a new mod that um, I still think I might like, but it has been aggravating the daylights out of me. Yes. Um, it is the infinite, I think it's the infinite build mod is what it's called. It is. Where if you produce a structure and I don't have to go over and click on the right-hand side to set it infinite, as soon as I make a structure, it's automatically infinite. I like that concept because I have to click every building I run infinite anyway. So I'm thinking to myself, why not go ahead and have it automatically do it? That's, that's about 20, 30, 50 less clicks I have to make per game. Um, but it, I have to tell you, it does throw you off. Look at this. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm building a ton of scouts. Why? <laughs> it's because that builds on. Uh, and the same thing here, you know, first, I don't know what I'm doing differently because that builds on because I set all of my structures to infinite anyway, so I have no idea why this would throw me off so much, but it does. And I've talked to other players and it has as well too. And I'm not saying anything bad about the mod, I probably just need to get used to it and I'm going to continue to try it here and there, but it definitely is throwing me off. This does not look like the normal B8 factor opening, that's for sure. But since I'm making these scouts, let's go ahead and put them to use. <laughs> now I'm scouting around. And I see Game Girl uh, in activity. We have her down here, but, you know, I don't know where she is in game. And I, I do see her here because this is my perspective, her perspective. Let's see. Um, I did not scout out. I do scout out that that is green, but I don't think I really, really made note of that. What I made note of was that orange, orange class A, R, B, uh, Kennedy, I'll just call him Kennedy, was encroaching on these mexes, which is fine. I really didn't want to have to obtain those mexes. I was just going to hold I have plenty myself already I was going to hold on to these in tech I just don't want to have him come in and invade me while I am doing an insta tech and I have a large force now you can see I have some boom bots over here to the right I do this for a reason you see this forest here so if Kennedy were to bring his units at me like so then I can hide these uh, boom bots in the um, in the trees I can run them in the trees. Now, he's going to see them, of course. So they're not actually hidden. But the trees do provide cover from the ground fire. So his uh, shells will be hitting some of the trees, and therefore some of my boom bots will have an easier time making it to his force. I wonder if his units would target the, the regular docks first anyways, or you know, if they have priority. I don't know. I don't know. It's something we might want to test out later on. Um, for, yeah, might want to test that out later on. 
So, yeah, this makes me happy. I see him putting a wall up. That's usually an yes. indication that he's not going to be a gr progressing forward. Um, he's, he's creating some defensive barrier, and I like that. Uh, probably be smart for me to move back a little bit, too, so that I don't instigate a, uh, a war with Kennedy on accident, but I didn't. Uh, I'm checking up, and I'm feeling pretty good about my situation right now. I'm thinking that in 11 minutes I have Tech 2 funneling out. Of course, I don't have a lot of other production, but I'm feeling like, given my situation and nobody's aggravating me anywhere, and I see Game Girl has a spy right next to me. I spy. liked that. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. I, I saw that in game. And when I saw that in game, I assumed you were down here, but you know, we can see that that is definitely not you. I can see that's not you in game, but I assumed that that was you. And let me say, when you're in game and you make assumptions and you don't follow through with investigating it, that's, that's not good. It can be a downfall. It can be a downfall. All right. Now, my shells are starting to hit him. Again, like I said, I should have pulled back. That way I wouldn't have instigated a war before I was ready. But since the shellers are attacking him, I'm guessing he's decided to go ahead and push forward. So let's see what happens here. I'm getting my boom bots in, uh, getting ready. This is not good that I've already lost a sheller. I should have been more prepared by pulling these back farther. Did not work out as well as I would have liked because, uh, you know, I had pulled these. You know, my micro here is horrible is what it really amounts to. Um, I needed to have all my docks and my ants out front. I needed to flank them with the boom bots at the same time, and I needed to have oh, my shellers. Just lost in the back. another sheller. Yep. Yeah, I still clean it up, but that was absolutely just miserable, horrible micro. Uh, it's just not the way I normally play, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm still feeling pretty good. You can see here that I have massive econ now, and I am going to go tons of tier two. And early on, 14 minutes is relatively early. Uh, I'm going to hit pretty hard with uh, a very large T2 force. Before you do, let's take a look see what everyone else is doing. I think that's a great idea. So let's do that. Well, real quick here, let's take a look at the econ. So Alpha's doing pretty good at 360, 275, 267, uh, Keeper 150, Game Girl 122. Okay, so <clears throat> got two tiers of econ going on. And this is uh, myself down here. Holy Manoli. Look at that. <laughs> Doc spam. Wow, this is Bob. We'll pull this down so you guys can see. Bob is making a lot of docks. He's going tier two. He's already he's already has tier two air, so that's pretty good. He has good economy. He's actually leading the pack right now. No, no, Alpha is, and uh, quite a bit of air. So this is this is not something I've seen a lot from Bob. So we'll see how that takes uh, how that how that works in game. Speak speak to what you're doing here. I got a little messed up on my build on early on being next to that lake right there i knew since i'd been taken out before by navy in the lake i wanted to build a pelter and some anti-air just to keep them from coming through and when i did that it set me back on my economy with the build i've been trying looks like you did the same up here i did which also set me behind and, and i just i just made a few errors here and there yeah that one probably was not necessary there. no for sure okay but i am already Getting my fibers out for tier two on the bots. Yep, that's good. Okay, looks good. So, and I noticed that um, you know we we know this now from watching some other games, but we're not doing it now. Uh, having your bot factory, about every ten or twenty, you know, docs produce a combat fabricator and eat these trees because it does bring in some metal income. You might think it's trivial, but it, it is nice, and it has a secondary effect in that it produces a, a fighting ground for you if somebody's rushing on you where they have to go through trees and you do not. So that's nice too. And we'll show some of that in a later video. I don't want to get into it. This one's a pretty long game, so I'll try to zip on through some of this. Uh, what do we got here? We got uh, Keeper. It's pretty pretty decent. He's got some production going on here. Got got a lot more units than I do. Has tier two, just, just like I do. So yeah, and he's, he's already got some nexus up. I, like, I expect to see some things from him in this game. Uh, here we got Alpha. Alpha is very, very good player, uh, has a very nice build. Matter of fact, Alpha, I specifically watched this game over and over again and wrote down your entire build because uh -oh. I liked it so much. It was beautiful. And uh, we won't rewind to show all that stuff. But, yeah, he has a very nice build. He gets tech up very quickly. At the same time, he has plenty of units. Here I am thinking that I am, uh, you know, doing very well in my base with 275, and he's sitting here at 360 with twice as many units as me at the same time. So and bringing out some Geely, also building a vehicle factory. I think you and I have found that the combat fabricators really have a lot to do oh, with yeah. some of that. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Uh, look at this, people. So um, 
And I, I usually make a lot of combat fabricators also, not quite as many as uh, Alpha has made here. Uh, but he's got quite a few of these, and he is eating up uh, the trees. And, when, and, you know, I watched this replay several times, and his, his metal spikes so high every time these guys squirt out a little tree. So uh, it's, it does definitely make a big difference and will give you the added uh, boost you need to your economy to sort of tech. He's already even got satellites out. So, you know, if you're near trees, you know, don't complain too much. Just eat those suckers up and, and enjoy the, the, the resources. Looks like brown and purple have already been fighting. Purple must have rushed. Yeah, he's a little late on his tech, 14 minutes. So he must have rushed a lot of units and pushed in, and, and it looks like he harassed Brown pretty good. Brown's ran to the water already at 14 minutes. Uh, here we got here. This is Kennedy, my neighbor. And it looks like he's, he's, you know, three, he's got about the same amount I do, I would say, maybe a little bit more in tech. Uh, Econ-wise, yeah, he's a little bit behind me and econ-wise. So let's get back to the action and see what's going on here. Put you down at the bottom. Go ahead and start this up. Watch it a little bit faster. So you don't have to watch it all through. Uh, got these shellers. I've cleared out his first force that came in. Bringing in my air. Look at that. Whoa. We we know that nobody killed him there. Uh, I do remember in the chat he had said, "Oh, shellers, I can't combat that," and he left. You know, some players figure that they're losing. And they just quit. It's just, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, a lot of players sometimes they, they're all about about playing many games, not necessarily about trying to come back from a from a lost position. So if they are losing one game, they may quit and go start another one really quickly. Nothing wrong with that. Everybody uh, enjoys the games, you know, differently. Myself, I like to fight. I love fighting from behind. I think it's a lot of fun. Just well, there's a lot of times that you end up with a commander and nothing else, and you come back to win the game. Absolutely. Now we see this from my perspective right now, and I see. This alpha, I know Alpha's pink. I know his color in game, and I see them going over to scout that. I'm going to make a show of force. This right here is contentious ground, and what I mean by that is um, now that it is open and there's resources there, um, it, I'm going to want it, and Alpha's going to want it. And being contentious ground, the first person that gets it has the advantage to holding it. And if I decide to retreat from it it will be harder to take back later on. And that's what contentious ground is. So I want to secure it, and you can see I have a pretty nice force here. Um, and it looks like he was headed that way, and he's turned around. Oh, yeah. And this this force, the, I have a ton of levelers and a ton of shellers and, and my air. But let's pause here because this is a quite important. Um, I have a force that I remember Alpha saying in-game, scared him, not in the chat. We said after the game we were watching the replay together. He's like, wow, I saw that force, and, and it worried me. So he was coming in to take care of it. Now, you see I did have my hummingbirds here, and I was ready to deal with this air force. Between my spinners and hummingbirds, I could have uh, taken care of this and kept most of my army alive and dealt with his army as well because I have a superior army to his um, right now at this point in time. But let's see why I'm running home. Look at this. Oh, dear. This is coming at me. Now, as I said in the beginning of this game, I assumed when I saw the satellite or saw the radar there from Game Girl that this was her. I did not know she was right here. So I thought, and, you know, Game Girl attacks me all the time, but I know her timing, and, uh, and I was pretty confident that with the units she makes and the timing that she did attack me, I'd be able to come home and have time to defend myself. What I was not expecting was to have Bob come in with this kind of air, and later on we know that there is a ton of docks coming also. And also have to deal with this air and his forces. So I am split between two. Um, I decide that this base is the one I need to hold because it has my commander in it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and try to get home as quickly as I can and secure that. And let me let me explain something to you why this is playing through. Also, um, a metagame might be the wrong word to use, but you know, for for a long time in my builds, I used to make a lot of ants with some Geely mixed in and some uh, spinners. That's what I did. You see he's eating me up as I'm trying to get home. And that works really well. But then I started going heavy tier 2, which combats that exceptionally well. But mass docks seems to combat the tier 2 exceptionally well also, assuming I don't have a lot of shellers you know, being protected. And Didn't you say the, um, not, the, not the flame tanks, but the tier 2? The vanguards? Yes. 
Well, even even the the flame tanks, whatever I can't think of what their actual name is right now, the tier one flame tanks. Both of them do very well. Let's watch this. A couple Uber cannons coming out. I am. Yeah, you see that happen. That just happened. I'm dead. 19 minutes in. Ugh. But um, I absolutely horrible micro here. Uh, if you looked at the PA stats, like my APM spike here, I'm trying to do everything I can, but I'm dealing with combat over here on this side, and he is just cleaning up my units, my gates, and everything, and even comes in on his. I killed most of his most of Bob's bombers, but he did a lot of damage also. I've lost three factories. I'm trying to pull the shellers back out of range of the docks by also getting all my other units in front to deal with it. I've got to navigate this with these large units, and the docks do a much better job. They're more liquid through these tight terrains. And um, I needed an Uber Cannon to kill as many as I can, but at the same time, I should have built a wall. I think if I had a wall and had a little bit faster micro, I could have held this force off. I might not have been able to hell off the next force that came, but I probably could have held this one off. But horrible game, horrible start, horrible econ, uh, bad assumptions. You know what, the factor, you absolutely earned this loss. You played horribly. So let's go ahead and carry on and see what's going on. There's no reason to put the perspective on me anymore because I am dead. What's your battle plan here? I know you're a little bit behind because right now you, you usually at 17 minutes already have four Tier 2 factories. Five tier two factories. Yeah, they're I do. In. I've got things queued up, but I was just really behind on everything. Okay. Energy, metal. Plus, you took most of my metal. I was headed toward. Up I there. did. I did take it. I didn't mean to. I just. I. I knew knowing this map. I knew that I could fly an engineer down here and probably have rain of that. So I did. Okay. So. And I've already sent a fabric to try to get. Get it up there. I it's see like that. Bob's beating me to some of it. Okay. Well, I know Red's below me, and I know Bob's beside me. And I don't have quite the ground force to send to attack and protect myself. So I'm kind of in limbo. I'm not quite sure right. what I should do at the time. Well, we'll come back to you as soon as uh, you get out of limbo. Plus, knowing Alpha's down there, I'm not so sure I want to leave my base at just yet. Yeah, we definitely hit a point where you have everybody's kind of booming around. Well, we got a nice battle going over here between purple and red. I like this. And also, it looks like Alpha's trying to clean up brown here. This is a nice battleground. I really like this. The brown's cleaned up. Let's take a look. Let's see, after after Bob has taken me out, he is continuing to spam these things, but now he's getting some tier two. Has he taken my resources? Uh, he probably should have already gotten this because Alpha has already secured this base that I've taken. So it's falling a little bit behind there, Bob. You need to get out and span more. It seems like he was doing that. I thought he had a faber up there. Maybe it got eaten. Yeah, I don't know. Because I don't see mine that I had over there either. At the moment, it looks like uh, Alpha just went and did a little uh, little research on Red to see what was going on. Oh, you lost your other fabric. You're sending two more over. All right, so this is interesting. So it looks to me like Alpha is probably in the lead based off of this. Uh, 671 he is, and everybody else is on another tier below him. And uh, he's sending a few forces out. Now red and purple were battling, and now Alpha. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where he's going. He's got a lot of stuff queued up. Look at that. Very nice. So what we've got going on is now this is interesting because I found out after the game. Wow, look at this. It's like a a green alligator or a python or something coming in. Do you remember the conversation that took place when this came in? Seems like they said they had some kind of pact at the beginning of the game about not attacking each other. They actually did. Uh, Alpha and Bob had decided to pack up this game, which, you know, in free-for-alls, that, that stuff happens. But it looks like it looks like Bob has reneged on it or changed his mind, and that happens also. I've done it myself. Uh, I do think, this is what I was talking about earlier in my base, again, I, I switched to making a lot of Tier 2 vehicle factory. Mass docks really do a good job of tearing that stuff up. They do. I mean, they die easily also in a lot of situations, but... Um, when I first started playing, people were massing bombers, air, and docks, and then it switched to ants and geely mixture, and then I started combating that myself with tier two, and I really liked it. It seemed to work, so I started doing that more often, and now here we are back at stage one again with docks, air, and it's, uh, you know, the game keeps, keeps, keeps changing. Yeah, I think, I think Alpha made a comment, docks, really? He did make a comment, docks, really, and, uh... They did their job. <laughs> they did. 
So, yeah, Alpha, who I believe was winning this at one point, is now, he probably still is in resource-wise, but Army-wise, yeah, he's still got the resources, but Army-wise, Alpha's at 84, and let's see, what's Bob at? 296, Gangrel at 437, very nice. Now I see Bob doing what you've kind of tried to get me to stop doing. Yes, he's charging in. Yeah, he's streaming, streaming a thin line of units through. And they're uh, just getting picked off. And I, I've done that so often. In this situation, the one thing that's a little bit different about it is that he is pressing the commander. There, in, there are no other forces harassing him as much. Uh, if you push into a small army, you're going to melt against it and die. But as long as there's not a lot of army around, pushing us not so bad. Uh, because you want to kill the commander before they can produce that army. Right. Yeah. And that's exactly what he's trying to do. Alpha is running for his life. He tried to build a gate and get away. Uh, he did not make it. Wow. And we have another battle down here with purple and red. And again, the same battleground. I like this. A lot of fun. It looks to me... I mean, these shells are going to help out. But um, purple has the, you know, the home field advantage here. Uh, he can produce stuff much faster as long as he keeps red back behind this line. You know, is... If, if he can stay back behind this line, he's okay. If, he, if red gets situated here, purple's in trouble. He'll be on dispersive ground. His units will be dispersed all over the place. And uh, it'll be more difficult for him to answer a, a clustered group of units. And nice, uh, nice flank atta attack try from red. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, he could have done a lot. Now, it looks like purple is prepared for that. This is a neat, neat situation here. We got a really nice battle going on. He's prepared for some flank attack. Uh, big armies in battle. Good stuff. Uh-oh, I see some movement down here. What's going to go on? It's like you're getting ready for something. Let's get. We'll get to that in just a second. Okay. Yeah, purple's going to make short work of the rest of this. Is he reinforcements coming? He's producing them, but he doesn't have enough yet to push, so there's going to be a while there. Let's switch back into this battle over here. Walk me through what you're thinking, of course. Uh, yes, and like I mentioned before, I am just not sure. Uh, I'm worried about leaving my base, and I could see that purple and red were going at it, so I kind of felt a little safe from red, and Bob is the next closest one to me. So I see red scouting me out there. So I'm still trying to figure out whether I should go to red or green, knowing red is fighting with purple, but here comes red scouting me. So I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I need to go toward red a little bit. And I can see, I can see Bob's force, so I'm not sure about that. He's got a lot of tier two, and I've got a satellite headed toward red, and then red nukes. It stopped, but he still sends a nuke, and I'm still torn. Do I go to red? Do I go to green? So I decide to go to green. I've got a fabricator up here thinking I'm going to build a gate up there. I don't want to go below the water because I see Bob has a radar and he'd seen me coming. Knowing Bob is into air, I was worried he was coming in with air. All right, let's take a look at it. He has a pretty nice force, as do you. Uh, this streaming of units is definitely going to hurt you out a little bit. I think that if we let them cluster up into a into a block, you might be able to move in more. That way, your uh, long range is protected. I'm nice, re nice retreating a bit. You're yeah, definitely retreating. In a situation like this, going down the coastline and retreating all the way home will allow you to shoot stuff on the way. I don't think you'll be able to get through the gate in time to save more units. And one thing I do do, which is good for anyone to remember is after I pass up the gate, I turn my gate off so his units can't come through and surprise me inside my base. Yes, that has happened before. I've done that to somebody before. I'm trying to escape with my fabber up top, to, but he got me. He does not want to let you out. I like this um, pelter. I didn't like it when you first put it down, but it is continuing. Well, it's gone now, but it was continually pelting them the whole time. Now, here's a situation that's kind of interesting. Uh, let me take a look at this right here. All right. So he, she has just poked a sleeping giant, and a sleeping giant is now ready to attack. Now, we do have some terrain going on here to fight around. We have this lake here. 
Uh, and there's a quite a bit of forest in here. It would definitely have been nice, I think, if you had had some fabricators and eaten some of this so that you, you know, so that you would have more firepower. You could have eaten it up to about right here so that as these units come in, they're still dealing with a little bit of forest and you're, and all of your shots are firing just fine. That's something I would recommend for future. Um, it's not a huge difference, but it can make a difference. Well, I will certainly try that. Also, um, and, you know, just like whenever I was battling up against Bob and just completely fell apart, um, lo trying to learn from those uh, situations can help uh, in future situations. Um, trying to take all the long range, the shellers and the geely, double clicking on them and creating a hot group. If you can do hot group one for those, then you can say hot group one, get in the back row, and then everybody else, hot group two, move up to the front line to to hold the hold the line. That way, the units that do the most damage can continue to do that damage through the whole game because these docks will come in and just mow those guys down, and they're quite expensive. And you don't want to lose them. The let's see, you see air coming in, and you're making air as well. You have your power here. Power is going to serve a little bit of a barrier, but at the same time, he's going to try and target that. Switching to hummingbirds so that you can keep that from happening will work very well. That's what I would recommend. I did build flak this time. Nice. And the spinners help. Yeah, you see all the fire taking place? It's allowing these docks to get up close and personal before they have to deal with it. Oh, look at these. You got the, yes. the hornets in. That's where the... Uh, yeah. That's, that's where the hummingbirds would definitely come in handy. You have, I know you have some bombers set, but hummingbirds would have been been worth a little bit more there. Yes, and he is just eating away at my power, and there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Nope. Let's look at that. Yeah, you're still positive right now, but it's not going to be for long. No. He's got a little flank attack. Bob's got a nice flank attack. I like that. Good job, Bob. I'm bringing some units down there to combat that. And it looks like you held off his main attack, which is nice. Let's see this. Armies. Gang Girl 194. Bob 259. So you're not too far apart, and he's got to come to you. And you see that he's having to retreat some. He has more. He just has more production than you right now. He has more air fabricators. It looked like he had more metal coming in, which means he's going to be able to produce more. Let me see. Where's Bob at? Economy. Yeah, 444 to your two. He's got a fractional more. And my power is just disintegrating. And that is hurting you. That that's what truly cancels out almost my all of my production. I'm frantically trying to build hummingbirds, and I just don't have enough power to build them. Yep, the air is killing you. I agree completely with this um, this counterattack. Uh, it's going to make him group his units up to deal with it. Therefore, they're not going to be attacking you and get by you some time. And they're not going to do a whole lot toward his. Tier two air down there, anyways. No, they're not. I would have, I would have faked an attack, just like you pulled in to do it, and then pulled right back out and gone home to help defend. It keeps them busy and keeps them from streaming units in on top of you. Gives you time to deal with the, what is attacking you, because these doctors aren't doing anything at the moment. They're in the water; they can't fire. Um, you definitely need hummingbirds. It looks like, definitely looks like it's a little bit of a lost cause right here. Um, I think that you're probably really hurting in the resources now. And he is not. He has more production than you. So the only thing that's really going to save you at this point is if someone attacks him and gives you time to, to lick your wounds. I think I'm pretty well done in for right now. Yeah. Bob's finishing up here. Not sure why he doesn't just move on in with those. Well, if he does and you have anti-air, he'll lose some very expensive units. And, you know, in some of the games and replays I've, I mentioned, with your shellers, instead of rushing in, just siege for a little bit longer before you go in. That's exactly what Bob's doing. He's sieging you with air, uh, letting the long range, he's letting these long range hornets just eat stuff away, knowing you can't deal with it, so that he retains them for a later campaign. It's a, it's a pretty good thing to do. It does buy you some time to do some stuff, but there is a certain time frame here where he can do that and push in slowly. Now he's going for the kill because he sees your commander. See, that's exactly what's going to happen. He did it too early. He lost all those units because right. he tried to push in. This force is going to be able to clean up. Nope. Maybe. Look at that. I holding. did a little bit of micromanaging with that one. Nice job. Holding on to the very end. Yes. Cost them everything you can. I, I like didn't it. want to give up. Nope. 
Okay, on the other side of the world, we have red and purple still battling it out. Speed it up just a little bit. Now, let's, let's take a look at the econ here. Purple, 248. Red, 292. So they're fairly even. Army counts. Uh, purple, 274. Red, 205. Mm, it's close. It's close. Uh, I'd say in looking at the screen here, I say that Purple has the advantage as far as the units. These shellers are really going to help him out, but I don't think he can push all the way in and get past this large force. So at the moment, in this particular battle, with this platoon on top of, uh, he's got two platoons. It's one platoon versus two, but he's got a little bit, little bit more long range. Purple's got the advantage, but let's see what's cooking strategically. Here. This, this is what is cooking strategically. Red has a nuke. Purple has nothing to answer it. Um, given the economy, the economy is pretty close, purple should be able to afford nuke defense and probably should have built nuke defense. You're watching the whole thing when you're in-game. Probably should have been able to, to, to do nuke defense. I think that purple was, was right to push forward uh, a little bit. This is facile ground, and I mean by that is, uh, you know, you're approximately, approximately right here, you're, you're only lightly in enemy territory, and you still have the ability to retreat. That's facile ground. When you're in that situation, it's okay to fight. What you don't want to do is push too far forward and lose your troops. You want to just keep pushing them back and, and, and allow you to gain territory, uh, and that's a good thing to do. So now Reds, they're seesawing it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's exactly what happens in a situation where you push, push too hard. Unprepared, and you lost units you didn't need to lose. Now we're in a situation where red actually has a little bit more advantage. So red is taking advantage of his nuke. And it looks like that is going to be the tipping point for this war. He is not going to be able to recover. He not only lost a lot of health on his commander, he lost most of his Tier 2 resources and uh, some of, a lot of his production. He doesn't have a single full factory left. Oh. Purple had built a, um, a fire base on the other side. That's, ve that's very nice. He can build some engineers to take out some of the resources, as well as uh, attack from a different angle. Unfortunately, Red saw him. He was a little bit too close to Red's base. He probably should have done it a little bit further away out of radar range. He would have gotten away with it better. Uh, Red now has a pretty formidable force. Well, Purple does have a couple of stagnant fabbers over there. Yeah, he does. I think he's... Uh, now he's moving them. Yep. Red has definitely built up a nice force now, and he still has nukes. So they're pretty even in the economy range. And it looks like now that Purple's out of the picture and he's out looking his wounds, it looks like it's time for Christmas. Looks like Red and Green are going to do battle. Now, Bob has a mostly air force and mass docks, while Red has a ground force. Can you pause it there a moment and see what each of them can individually see of each other? Yeah, that's a really good idea. Let's do that. Because, you know, this is 50 minutes of the game. They should All have... All right, so what can Bob see? Okay, he just kind of sees... He's got a tier 2 radar. And he can see there's he can see blobs. He doesn't know yeah, exactly what the units are. He can see there's movement from red. It looks like he's flanking around back to take care of resources. Okay. Okay. What can what can red see? We'll see what red can see. It says sees two groups of bob coming through, and at one at the bottom, he sees that he's surrounded. He does see he's surrounded with units, but he does not see Bob's base. He doesn't have radar on that. He's been contending with purple for so long, that's been his focus. Um, it's about time for him. He is getting a orbital factory here, so he probably will start to try to move satellites around, but we'll see how that goes. That's a good call. I like being able to see what they're doing. Okay, here we go. Let's see how this works out. Right, Bob doesn't really fare much of a chance here in this particular war. It looks like he's deciding to pull back. He doesn't have many Tier 2 units in that No, he group. doesn't. And, you know, we showed that the docks can do really well, really well versus Tier 2 in a lot of situations, but this is not one of those situations. Uh, there's a lot of ants in here also, which are going to combat that pretty well, and Tier 2, and 
heck of a lot of units. Now, Bob's doing a really good job of flanking and, and securing, or I should say, taking care of and eliminating Red's resources. Very good job. If Bob would take it with his, his information and take his economy and build a lot more production and to combat this Tier 2, he'd be doing much better. And if he had some orbital satellites to see what was going on, yeah, he I, may have been able to attack a little sooner. Yes. I agree. Looks like Red has plenty of spinners. Now, even in a situation like this, even with this build and the, uh, you know, this planetary annihilation build where the bombers are now targeted first, it's still important to have air dominance. Well, also, Bob could have done a lot of damage to that force on the right of red. He doesn't have spinners, many spinners in oh, that Oh, yeah, he one. could have annihilated that with, it, with it, the bombers and the tier two he has when the force was out of when it was out of uh, place right here, he yes. could have flown over and take care of that easily because the spinners are so slow. Oh, he's... he's uh, I lost a lot of bombers What's here. going on, Bob? Did you take a trip? Take a trip down to 7-Eleven and get a big gulp? What's going on here? You're just letting yours die. The green alligator is slumbering. Yes. Maybe he's off doing something. Oh, huh? uh, here we go. He's back in the game. Let's see here. He's going for an attack. Oh, nice try. It was a nice try. I think that in this situation, Boom Boss would have been better. If you have vision of the commander, the, the slammers will definitely kill him, but the Boom Bots are cheaper to make because you're going to lose him. It's a suicide mission, right? It's totally a suicide mission. The Boom Bots are going to, to die, and they're cheaper to make and they make faster, and they do, uh, they do more damage. They explode on impact. That's right, they do. Okay, Bob. Yeah, I, I see why he was doing it. I see that he was hoping that with the commander being damaged, he'd be able to get in there and get it. But what he ended up doing was going across. Um, That's a lot of anti-air. A lot of anti-air. He's got flak. He's got normal tier one. He's got spinners. Yeah, commander's safe. He is definitely safe from air. Now, if he would have come in from the other side. He would have. I, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of factors here, but there wasn't as much uh, to stop him. And there is quite a few spinners around his commander there, but he would probably had a better chance. You're right. I completely agree. The, if he come in from either side, the north, the south, or the uh, or the east, he would have had a better chance than coming in from the west in that situation. Uh, we got a battle going on here. Am I missing it? So he's leading them. That's good. Bob's leading them by backing up to let his long-range attack. And he's also, uh, lead, instead of, this is nice too, coming in and addressing, if, if this red force was pushing on your base, if you, if you go ahead and attack, sometimes when you feel like you should be defensive, being offensive is, that was a waste right there. Being offensive can be defensive because you're going to pull the army away from attacking you. Now, in this situation right here, dang, that force, that looks like, Wow, that's a full company right there of, uh, of docks. And he been, he's seen his commander enough to know there's no land deterrent right there. Yep. It's just spinners and anti-air on that side. So he could probably push through if he were to go. Uh, if, he allows these, if he allows these shellers to build up, he's not going to be able to make it. If he pushed earlier, he would. Maybe he's feeling the pressure because Red's pushing on him. Yes. You know, given Bob's uh, complement of units, taking out... All the anti-air, as he's doing right now, and then flying with the bombers mm -hmm. might actually work. He got a lot, got a lot gone there. Yep. Oh, here comes a nuke. Not sure that's going to matter. Oh, uh, look at this! He's desperation mode. Uh, he's sending in shellers and bombers as they come in. Uh, flank would, a flank is a good idea here, but he landed a little bit too far back to take out the shellers. He is taking them out, but they're still doing their damage. Run! Oh, no, Bob. I see no hummingbirds. Oh, Bob. That's kind of what I was doing when he was attacking me. Couldn't get the hummingbirds out. Yes. For the most of the game, here they are over here. Most of the game, Bob had hummingbirds. And, uh, yeah, at the last minute, out of desperation, he's switching to bombers to deal with the ground force. 
and there's nothing much you can do. So, so that was Keeper Keeper. Keeper Keeper takes the win. Good job, man. Good job. This is BA Factor. And Game Girl. Signing out. Hope to see you in the lobby.